Mashing is one of the most important steps in the brewing process. It has far-reaching consequences, affecting the rest of the brewing steps, as well as some of the most important characteristics of the final beer, such as flavor and mouthfeel. Mashing process starts by mixing malt grist or crushed malt with warm water. By controlling temperature and time, different enzymes are activated that break down malt starch into smaller sugars. The sugars are essential for fermentation, where yeast converts most of them into alcohol. Before we dive a little deeper into mashing process, let's take a quick look at malt starches. These are big macromolecules, which basic building blocks are simple sugars. You can think about starch as a big string of beads, or a pearl necklace if you like. Each bead or pearl is a simple sugar called glucose. During mashing process, this large string of beads or starch gets broken down to smaller pieces or sugars in other words. This is done by different enzymes, which also come from malt. Enzymes, on the other hand, are like tiny machines that help break down large molecules and help speed up chemical processes. When they break down starch molecules, some of the final products of their action are simple sugars. Tiny sugars that consist of only one, two or three beads are fermentable, which means that yeast can convert them into alcohol. Anything that has more than three sugars molecules linked together is too big for the yeast, and those sugars are unfermentable and as such they contribute to the body of the beer. Now, since we want to keep things simple for the purpose of this video, let's think of enzymes as scissors. Different enzymes are breaking down starch molecules in a different manner, and they also work at different temperatures. While there are many enzymes in barley malt, the two most important ones for brewers are alpha and beta amylase. Alpha amylase randomly breaks down links or bonds within the starch molecule, producing a mixture of both small fermentable and unfermentable sugars. Alpha amylase has the optimal temperature range between 70 and 75 degrees Celsius or 158 and 167 degrees Fahrenheit. It also works at temperatures lower than 70 degrees Celsius, but the action of the enzyme is slower. It gets inactivated over 77 degrees Celsius or 170 degrees Fahrenheit. The action of alpha amylase increases the wort extract. Beta amylase, on the other hand, is breaking down every second link in starch molecule, thus producing simple maltose sugar, two beads or pearls linked together. Maltose, which is the main sugar coming from the malt, is the most abandoned sugar in wort and is highly fermentable. Therefore, the action of beta amylase increases the wort fermentability. Beta amylase has the optimum temperature range between 62 and 66 degrees Celsius or 143 and 151 degrees Fahrenheit. It also works at temperatures below 62 degrees Celsius and gets inactivated over 68 degrees Celsius or 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Infusion mashing techniques employ mashing at single temperature throughout the entire mash before the temperature is increased at the end of the mashing process for enzyme deactivation. We can say that the infusion mashing temperature we choose is always a compromise between the action of alpha and beta amylase. Typical temperatures used in infusion mashing are mostly between 65 and 68 degrees Celsius or 149 and 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Mashing at 65 degrees Celsius will produce beer with somewhat higher alcohol and lower body, while mashing at 68 degrees Celsius will result in slightly increased beer body and reduced alcohol levels. It is also worth mentioning that if infusion mashing is employed, it is important that well-modified malts such as British Ale malt are used. If less well-modified or under-modified malts are used, for example, certain types of lager or pilsner malts, temperature program mashing is typically employed. The level of malt modification has a direct effect on the rate at which starch gets broken down to sugars 
temperature program mashing has more mash steps, which are targeting different temperatures to enhance the action of specific enzymes. For example, a temperature program mash may include a mash rest at 63 degrees Celsius to target the action of beta amylase, which will increase wort fermentability. Next temperature rest at 72 degrees Celsius would allow alpha amylase to further break down some starch molecules and increase wort extract. The final rest at 78 degrees Celsius would stop the action of all enzymes. Sometimes additional temperature rest may target the action of enzymes which are breaking down proteins in malt. The optimum temperatures for these proteolytic enzymes are between 45 and 50 degrees Celsius or 113 and 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Protein breakdown may have a positive effect on foam stability, mouthfeel and yeast nutrition during fermentation. Additionally, beta glucan rest can be introduced at around 40 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Breaking down beta glucans may prevent the gumming up of your mash or stuck mashes and may improve wort runoff rates. Hopefully, this video will help with better understanding of how the relationship between various mash recipes and different beer styles work and why specific steps are applied in every recipe. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and like it on YouTube and also consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you for watching.